Growth fat dwarfs. Growth fat dwarfs. I'm telling you, like, my colony, if you're a good pawn, so if you have some good, you know, some, some good skills, you know, some good traits, my colony is probably the best place for you to be on the planet. You know? Like, I'm going to do everything in my power to keep you alive. Manhunter, so one raid, one manhunter. Oh, my. 33 waste rats. Look at those guys. The Skaven are here. I mean, the rat men, rat men do not exist. How dare you say otherwise. Boy, I hope there's no opening down here. I should have checked. Should have checked. First time you've seen the waste rats. Yeah, they look kind of interesting. Look at those guys. The legally distinct rats are here. Probably sacrifices if you show up my colony. <laughs> How many more days on this quest? Two days. Do they give more meat than a normal? I don't know. Let's see. They give 19 leather and 35 meat. That's 35, 19. Okay. So three more leather. Like eight more meat to waste rats. Tastes like chicken. <laughs> I'm guessing probably not. Regular rat meat from a toxic animal. That's just like eating animals. Die. Like you can have a horse die of the plague and then immediately eat the meat. It's fine. Don't worry about it. That's RimWorld. Where's the giant rat that makes all the rules? There's no such thing. That's a three-year-old child worth of meat. <laughs> we measure how much meat something gives in three-year-old children. Thank you, RimWorld. Thank you. Man, I wanted some dwarf babies by now. Did you guys get some love in last night? Let's, let's look at you. This is so weird. You guys need to get to it. No further questioning. 50%. Just being conscious plus 15%. So nice. We need a high mate for all of our dwarves. Barracks reduce the chance for loving. No, it doesn't. But her being in her 40s does. And I'm meaning that like literally it does. It's not just me like making a joke or something. But yeah, we, we had some people in barracks getting like loving times eight not long ago. So it's a family friendly channel. Yeah, we promote family growth. That's right. All families, I mean, aside from mine, obviously, should have 10 children. All dwarf families should have 10. Can't wait till we have some dwarven babies. Even they have to be dwarven vat babies. All right. Uh, any of this other we want to grab before we go into advance? Can you use mortar under the mountain? You cannot, but you can use it from Thin Rock Roof. You can remove Thin Rock Roof, and there will definitely be spots of Thin Rock Roof, so... Yeah, we will get mortars. We'll find some Thin Rock Roof to have our mortars located, even if it's, like, here, you know? Obviously, that's not Thin Rock Roof, but you get the idea. Definitely be using mortars this game at some point, though. All right, that should be good. We have been being eaten out of house and home by all these visitors. When do you guys leave? They've eaten all our food. Now they're going to leave. They leave in nine hours. Would you keep an infestation alive to buffer against raids? Sometimes I do, yeah. And this one, infestations right now are going to spawn basically in our base. Um... So, obviously, I'm not going to be able to do that in this one. Get in there. Oh, there's a rat left. Run. Run. I almost called him gasoline. What do we get from this? Like a little bit of hyperweave or something? Yeah. That was our second Cassandra hit, so we're safe for about six days. How do you set the pawns work tier up? Can never seem to find a good balance. So, are you talking about in this tab? So, it's important to note that it goes from left to right, one through four. So that means it will start at the left and it'll go through looking for the ones. And when it hits a one, it'll say, all right, is there a job that needs done right now that I am zoned to be able to do in this category? If not, it'll keep going. It'll go all the way from the left to the right as ones. And then it'll start over at the beginning and go from two. And it'll keep doing that all the way through four, right? So that's the first thing to, to note. As far as what you set your priorities to, it really depends a lot on obviously what pawns you've gotten and how many pawns you have, right? So whether you need to have more like specialists that only have like one or two jobs or something like that. But my thing that I usually do in general throughout the whole run is first off, I'm looking for what do I need to keep us alive? Obviously things like Ooh. like planting and stuff that, that we need to like keep ourselves alive, right? And then I just go from there. I also like to put everyone on like pretty high cleaning, especially early to keep things higher quality so their mood is up. But as long as you know the priority, how the priority system works, you can then go through and, and look at like passions and skill levels and decide what you want to do. 
Do you have a reliable way to deal with ranged enemies in a kill box funnel in a pure melee run? Not really. This is about as good as you can get. There is another thing that you can do as well. Like if you set up a, something like this and then you have two doors where you attack, you can actually crowd around and get five attackers hitting that same one. So like if you have a, a door exiting here, you can have one, two, three, four, five when they go into it and they'll try to go through the door before they get to you. But but yeah, I did a melee only run. You can check out what I what I did on that run if you want. I did a melee only. It's up on YouTube. Uh, Yeah, for the most part, I had elephants. <laughs> I had elephants to go in. This kind of setup is about as good as you can get with that five melee hit, unless you're wanting to do corner punch. I didn't do the corner punch for that one. Medium psychic drone for five days. I think not. I think not. I'm actually a little worried about this food situation. All right, let's go ahead and get to the microelectronics. So, uh, or we're already at microelectronics. Get to advanced research. What ending am I aiming for? I'm not sure. I don't really have that in my mind, but I think the one that would be most fitting with this kind of playthrough would probably be royalty. So if this survives long enough to start really thinking about endings, we'll probably try to get to the royalty side. Yeah, I, I know about that's, I consider that kind of the melee, one of the melee exploits. Yeah, I know about the wood generator and having enemies path through it and they can't hit the center mass of it with your melee pawn there. Yeah, Those ones are even more exploited than the singularity box. So I don't usually use them, but I do know of them, yeah. Solar Flare taking the power out right before we decided to go into advanced research. <laughs> Looks like some of the mushrooms are going to come in at a very, very good time. Man, those guys came through and ate all of our food. And they peaced out. <laughs> like, literally, they were here long enough just to eat all the food. And they left. No weapon for the high mate. Well, high mates can't fight. So, no. High mates are incapable of violence. They're delicate. Yeah, they go down fast. High mates definitely go down fast. It's just in their DNA. Because they're delicate. Yeah, they, they, they're like wimps. I don't know what else you could gather from that. You didn't know high mates were good. Someone said they're like a shiny Pokemon, which is kind of true. Uh, so when you have a high mate bonded to someone, check this out. They're bonded to Claw. Claw, just from having a high mate lover, is having his pain reduced by 50% and his conscious increased by 15%. Delicate like tasty. <laughs> Tinder. Tinder and mild. There's always in that joke about Silent Night. It's like, I don't understand. Why is he, de why is he describing the baby Jesus like he's a piece of chicken? Tinder and mild. It's like a Burger King commercial. They're new chicken nuggets. Love makes you more powerful. Yeah. Oh, and the mood. Yeah. Yeah. Psychic bond at plus twelve. Crazy. I might make Claw the leader because of that. Actually, I think I will. Let's go ahead and make Claw into the leader. Claw, would you like to be the leader of everyone? The leader of the free worlds. This is not the free worlds. <laughs> soon, soon. We got it. We got to get this food, uh, food going first. All right, growth vet. Throw these out of here right now. Get that extra space. All right. Uh, and now we're gonna have some idle people because we don't have enough research, advanced research benches for everyone. What do we need for this components? So we need to work on find those components. Let's go back to strip mining here. And we can check if there's any components that we already see nearby. We could also go ahead and send off Lilith to trade. We don't have a lot to trade, but... Oh, right. She's incapable of social, right? Any animals down here aside from Boomalope? Okay, I hate to do this, but I am going to put these to be mined out. Cannibalism? Hopefully not. Yeah, that would start breaking down the colony really quick. We'd have, like, minus 20s on everyone. Can a high mate do anything other than be a companion? I mean, they can they can work and stuff depending on yeah. It's so like they're they're always good at social, or at least they have a bonus at social, I should say. So you're gonna mostly find high mates as being like social, obviously medical, research, cooking, that kind of thing, and basically just happy all the friggin' time. Yeah, they have a bonus to social just from their genes, right? Uh, great social. So just baseline, they have a plus eight social of whatever they would have had. Uh, there's an ibex we could have killed. Okay. Let's go get some shooting experience here. Some meat. All right, now that we got the electric stove, we'll go ahead and set this up. Um, let's make it out of limestone. Just one, just one. 125 beer. Probably safe going and trading a little bit of that off. It's a break point in the enemy raid pathing that a route becomes so long they start smacking walls instead. No. 
You can literally have a tunnel that is so long that raiders will starve to death and try to leave the map and they still won't attack walls as long as they have a pathable target. Now they'll attack doors in that if when they start to break down and leave the map, but starvation. Yeah, there's a starvation kill box. It's just a very long maze. Yeah. And I'm really hoping we can get some of these. I might just harvest a little of them early, but growth vats is done. Growth vats done. Ugh, these are so close. As soon as these start coming in, we're good, so. I'm just going to do it. Do open double doors make the AI wonky? No. Are you sure they have a pathable colonist target or a zonable animal target the entire time? And they had one when the raid spawned? Or that, that's one of the big important things. Like, if the, unless the raid is a prepare raid, you need to have the pathing to a targetable colonist or zonable animal when the raid spawns in. Not OG gamers. That's right. SSJ4... Sephiroth, 420, 69, 1337. <laughs> Can I explain for a minute the lurking thing? So lurking just means that the stream is running in some capacity. And they even changed it that it can be it can be muted. So as long as you have the video playing, lurking can be literally playing your own game while the stream is going on a side monitor or whatever. It can be just full screen, sitting back and watching and not participating in chat. There's lots of different kinds of lurking, but basically as long as the stream is running. All right, Jeremy, what does Granny have to say about the streamathon for November? Granny says, Why are you talking about Jessica's underwear? Just what I like to talk about. All right, Cassandra, are you going to hit us again soon? Soon. Soon. Is there any reason I don't use shells? There's a shelf right there. There's, n there's no reason for me to use shells at the moment. The reason why is because it doesn't do anything for me right now. It would add more wealth and raid points without doing anything else other than making it so that people don't ask. <laughs> not that it gets you. It's, it's asked a lot, though. Don't worry. There will be more shells. It removes negative beauty. That's not going to do anything for this room. It's not going to increase. The next break point is at 120. We're not going to get to 120 impressiveness just by putting these things on shelves. It, so it doesn't, it doesn't really matter right now. It doesn't matter right now. All right, I need to get this growth vat stuff up and going. So we need to get another one of those ovums before we can't get them any longer. No medical beds. Here's one. Soul sapper. Get that out of there. All right, let's do the dirty to it, apparently. All right, claw. Are you going to do that right in the bed next to soul sapper? Ugh. All right, it's done. <laughs> All right, growth vat. Does anybody care if there's just a growth vat in the corner? I don't have the mushrooms of this growth fat right now. It could be worse. Most challenging part of this run will be probably having to rely on heavy weapons only, especially against uh, some late game breacher raids. Yeah. And also some of the new boss mech raids with heavy weapons only might be a little, uh, a little difficult. All right, let's do some more strip mining here. Party. <laughs> what are you celebrating? Right, see if we hit anything there. Just when you think Rimworld couldn't get any worse. <laughs> Insert it into the growth vet. Soul Sapper is confused. I'd be confused too, Soul Sapper. Especially because I don't I don't have any for you to take, but <laughs> what Soul Sapper's like, what did I just see? Right? Did he, just, he just No, he couldn't have right next to my bed? No. He wouldn't do that. He wouldn't do that. Trust me. Alright, mushrooms are coming in. Perfect. Good timing. It's got... Man, how much nutrition does this thing take? I didn't look at it when we were doing it in uh, in the last run. Like, we had a growth vet. But I never really looked at how much it actually takes. Oh, my lord. Plan to transition to bedrooms. Probably around 81,000 wealth, yeah. 81,000 wealth, we're going to end up having uh, higher expectations. There we go. Man, that's a lot. That is a lot. There it is. There's a little Dwarven bean in there. Nice. So we'll leave it in there until it gets to three. 
Man, that bean is hungry. That's <laughs> right. Yeah, the hunger modifier is probably impacted too. Yeah. The hungry little bean. And it'll be big enough to eat. No, no, no. It's going to be your first baby dwarf. Baby dwarf. We're going to have one in 8.5 days. 8.5 days. Visitor with relations. You can't be related to us. You're not a dwarf. Don't lie to me. Man, I wanted to have more colonists, but it's going to take a long time to get more colonists this playthrough. So I got to be a little bit careful with what we do. So, hmm. Who else can we extract from? Can't do hers because they are siblings. Uh, Sloth. We can do this to Sloth. So let Sloth finish on some of the planting. Ah, uh, we should probably let them catch them on food first. All right, maybe I will just go ahead and do a few bedrooms and really freak people out. Can't wait. Can't wait for people to come in and say, did they nerf the barracks? No, no, they didn't. Content warning, bedrooms. Uh, I should probably work on getting more defensive setup first, honestly. All right, so they nerf barracks. What? All right. That'll help a little bit on retreat if we need to retreat those ways. So now we have four places Welcome for chain back. shotgun. Your steadfast Two eight, melee blockers. Two repairs. It's actually more than... The, I'm actually really curious what the next raid, how big it's going to be. And then... And we're about to get it to... Wow, we're at 35,000 wealth. Ouch. How long can you leave them in the growth vat? Um, so this just came out, but I believe you can put children in there if you want, all the way up to adulthood. So we're going to leave them in there just until they're three, but I believe you can do so all the way to adulthood. Quest available... The boom rats, 26 boom rats. Our modest fellowship expands. Praise that could sun. be that might end up being a, a like mule character. We actually need a mule character again, but so children can be mules, <laughs> children can haul, can't haul as much to be to be fair, but but you know, they can they can hire they can haul some cloth and mushrooms, it's fine. <laughs> All right, so once Sloth goes through here and uh, finishes up these mushrooms, we have some in stock. We're going to extract the ovum again. I dwapped the yayo, sir. I profaned. No, no more profaning peace rituals. <laughs> For anyone that doesn't know, the first time I saw a child in RimWorld, our first, our, uh, not our next, our first biotech run, it's up on YouTube. We got a quest from a three-year-old child, and he said that he profaned a peace ritual between two armies. <laughs> so it's like, I'm sorry. Can children take? Children can take drugs when they turn 13. They're not allowed to take it a minute sooner, but on their 13th bar birthday, they can take all the drugs. All right, Dwarven brethren, what are we going to work on next while we're doing this research? Well, first off, like I said, on Sloth, we're going to go ahead and extract the ovum. Oh, man, it's so weird with uh, with Claw doing this, you know? So, Claw takes the ovum. He drops it on the floor next to the bed, and then he goes over there and fertilizes it. And hearts appear. And then he went and had a beer afterwards. What is going on? These freaking dwarves. It's not how it's done normally, no. Uh, generally not. Generally not. Uh, let's divide the growth vats up. So that if we have like an infestation, one gets destroyed, not all the little dwarven beans get destroyed. Look away, look away. <laughs> Why does the fungus room have different colors? It's because of the floor change. Yeah, it's where it switches from limestone flooring to sandstone flooring. And so the green overlay color on top of the different stone flooring just makes it look different. Growth fat dwarfs, growth fat dwarfs. I thought my dwarves are gonna be procreating more on their own without growth vats. You know, I chose, like, high libido. Very fertile. I made my dwarves very fertile. But they're just like, nah. Let's just do it into a petri dish and shove them in a tube for three years instead. Will they make kids without double beds? They have a double bed. And I forced two people that aren't in a relationship with free and open love in the ideology precept into a into a double bed so uh all right so let's work on getting to deep drilling might as well get that done you keep hearing doors instead of dwarves all right there's our second dwarven bean that bean's already gotten much bigger five and a half days on that that bean these out of here i guess we can go ahead and mine these out for our future endeavors might as well we got some idle people we don't have enough advanced research benches anyway so 
Is a raid. All right. They're going to prepare. We're up to 19 raiders. Ouch. Okay. All right. This is what I was wanting to see is about where we are on the on the raid points for Cassandra. So that answers that. You will make babies. Oh, what a terrible time. Why do you keep getting it, Soul Sever? What's going on here? You're not sickly. Really bad time to get the flu there, Soul Sapper. So we'll tend to them. Bro, a tribute collector. Well, well. Uh, we'll go ahead and use Preach Health on them. Oh. Combat's happening. All right. Impits can only breathe fire once every five days or something like that. So, yeah, get all that fire out. Is there ever a good time for the flu? No. <laughs> How do you avoid prison breaks? If you mean the exploit, you just don't have a prison bed or a prison sleeping spot in the room with a prisoner, and they won't have a prison break event. Or you can just chop off their legs. That's also true. Yeah. That is a royal tribute collector versus some impits. Guys, I wanted to fight this, actually. <laughs> and the plague. What is going on? Cassandra. What a real piece of work. Soul Sapper. Come on, just stop getting sick. Huh. Everyone's dead. Let's go see what's down there. If we want to go that far to scavenge or not. There is a chain shotgun down there. Um, but Cassandra's off cooldown right now, so I gotta be a little bit careful. So she can attack again immediately. I do not want the plasma sword to use, but we could sell it. All right, uh, Lilith, run down here and grab that. Plasma sword, yeah, I don't want to use it though. Plasma sword breaks uh, collision and will allow them to walk over the top of us. What's it breaks collision from setting them on fire, yeah, to be, to be completely clear when you set them on fire the enemy no longer has collision so you could use it against a mech i guess if you wanted without any issue of course it's not like it's good against mechs or anything so but we can take that and sell it so it is set for females to be able to have beards but unfortunately we didn't realize that bushy beards overwrites unisex beards for some reason so unfortunately because we have the bushy beards females don't get the ability All right, so let's talk about our dwarves a little bit. We still are low in population because we are racist. I mean, we are dwarf strong. We're dwarf strong. We're dwarf strong. We're not racist. <clears throat> anyway, Cassandra hit us right at the end, so she could definitely hit us again. Uh, we did get to chain shotguns. We got three chain shotguns. Oh, we got a high mate. I'm actually going to name the high mate because we're going to keep the high mate. So right off the bat today, we're going to see who our concubine is. This is going to be interesting. So come on. It's Rob Nam. Oh, God. I almost always play Randy, but every now and then I play Cassandra to make it a little bit harder. And yes, Cassandra on average is harder than Randy. Believe it or not, I have a guide up about it, but uh, I usually play... Uh, the previous run that we just finished was against Randy, but this one is against Cassandra, so we can actually see a lot more raids, so... You know, race got a blue pawn. Well, they are a concubine. So, Romnom. Why is Romnom all capitals? I don't know, because he's a concubine, I guess. So... We got a concubine. Now we're playing Randy. Wink! Now, our dwarves, you wouldn't think it by looking around, but our dwarves have high libido and they have very high fertility, right? But they just didn't want to breed. They just didn't want to. They just didn't want to. So we got some research done. We had some refugees come in and I said, all right, let's use these refugees to find out how to fertilize each other. And so we did. And they taught us uh, by shuffling some papers on how to breed. And so we got two little dwarven beans, and they're now in these growth vats. So uh, our dwarves won't mate. Well, we're going to make some dwarves in a vat. So we got some dwarven vat babies that are that are brewing here. So uh, we're going we're gonna to make some dwarves, whether I put it in a tube or what. The singularity kill box do does work. Are, are you joking about it, or are you asking sincerely? It it does work. I literally just used it. In a run right before this, it works. <laughs> joking i read too fast he got me canceled <laughs> my my stream since 1.4 has become a, a singularity 
tech support stream. Right. But no, I, I don't. I don't mind. It's just funny that uh, since 1.4, I've had so many people that are like, oh well, I guess the, the singularity is not working anymore because you're not using it. So I ended up. I was man. So during the last playthrough, for anyone that wasn't here for that, I had a lot of people coming in and being like, oh, you're not using the singularity. It must not be working. And then why is he not using it? And I was like, oh my God, I'm just going to make it. I'm just going to make it. I might, I might not even use it. I'll just make it. So I built it. And then right after I built it, someone new to the channel came in and was like, do you always just use the broken singularity to win? Do you ever play differently? And I almost died. I literally, I like, quite literally, I went into like cardiac arrest. I was laying in the floor. It's like, you can't friggin' win, man. But anyway, it does still work. A little dramatic. It's real. It's truth though. I, I died. I literally died. No, you I was dead. They pronounced me dead. Uh, I was dead for three minutes. Oh man, the racetrack was so good. That's one of my favorite moments of stream ever is the the day after the racetrack when I was trolling people as revenge. What's the purpose of these? So by default, enemies can't shoot from the same tile a column is, uh, is on and it slows them down. So what happens here? The downside to these over barricades and stuff is that the barricades have more HP, but the barricades have other problems. So basically this makes it so enemies won't shoot from that tile unless they get stunned into that tile. They will start shooting from it if they get stunned and come out in that. So this is to force shooters to come into melee range instead of shooting at us, basically. What problem do the barricades have? So the barricades, the enemy picks up speed faster. Well, they have two problems. They don't do it as well as slowing and... The other problems with the barricades, the barricades gives more um, gives more cover. So as the enemy is walking through, that's the biggest one. Instead of getting the cover from this, which is only 25%, enemies will get 55% cover as they walk through into melee range. And right now, with us having so little firepower, we're not breaking these anyway. And with us having low accuracy, we, would, we don't want the barricades to be another barrier to our poor accuracy and being able to hit our target. So early game, I prefer columns a lot of the times. But there are trade-offs if you're doing it in a shotgun melee tunnel. And in a shotgun melee tunnel, the columns are going to make it so that you hit the targets more often is one of the big parts. And barricades are going to hit them less because of the extra cover they get while they're backed up here. I, I suggest if you are using this specifically, the reason I'm using this in this run is because it's a shotgun melee setup. And that's what we're mainly using. I wouldn't use it if we were using other guns and things. But I suggest using this early game because of the reduced cover, the 25% instead of 55. So that's that's the big reason. That's the big reason. What's in the tank? Those are baby dwarves, you see? Baby dwarves. What's in the box? It's Gwyneth Paltrow's head. Oh no, I was just about to watch Seven. I've been putting it off for 20 years. I was finally about to do it. What are the rooms on the right? Is this the bedroom run? Well, these are on the left. So no, the rooms on the right are not bedrooms. <laughs> it's all it's all good it's all good yeah i'm gonna use bedrooms just to play differently this game yeah blame it on listexia <laughs> how many calls am i planning on getting this round i don't know as much as i as much as i get i guess you know i'm gonna i'm gonna keep making baby dwarves until we're overpopulated all right i'm gonna test something here we're going to go ahead and smooth just one of these Is there a way to make a freezer underground over Red Mountain? What I usually do is I usually vent the heat into the entrance tunnel if there's no if there's no thin rock roof. If there's thin rock roof, you can make your own chimney to vent heat. Um, or you can find a place like this that opens to water where people can't come in. So th those are your your best options. Can overhead mountain roof collapse? It very much can. It will it will continually collapse. So if you have a uh, if you don't have a support nearby and the overhead mountain collapses it can kill people and it can even delete the corpse it can cause so much damage and then if you mine the piece out before you have another support it will just collapse again forever you know what i have one complaint about overhead mountain well I, may, I might have a few but i do have a quick comment so you'll have a map that has no mountains like it'll have um it'll have even a flat map will sometimes have it like this sometimes you can have a rock area like this and there's like two tiles that are overhead mountain. <laughs> You'll mine this out because you need that area for your base. And there's like two tiles of overhead mountain that will just collapse forever. And you got to think about it. Like what kind of mountain is that? What kind of mountain is that? It's it's a single tile that just goes up forever. Like what is this? There's, there's no way. Wouldn't I just fall over? But anyway, that's, you know, game. That's some kind of, yeah, some kind of one foot wide spire 
that goes up into space. Uh, I always hate that. Like, you'll have a flat map, and you'll have you'll have a big, open, perfect area, right? And then you'll have this. And it's like, all right, I'll, I'll just mine through that. And there's, like, one tile of overhead mountain. It's like, Tynan, please. Because everything wrong with Rimworld is Tynan's fault at the end of the day. Mice. It's a big stalagmite. The kingdom under the mountain. That's right. What's my energy source right now? What is going on with Soul Sapper? There is something weird happening, and I don't know what it is.